So these Tyranids are looking really good, but something still doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> I have been too long from this realm. Now tremble in my presence, mortal. Welcome fellow hobbyists and fans of otters back to the channel where we're going to be taking a back seat on the Tyranids for today and painting up something a little bit different. The model I'm painting today is the Master of Possessions, first released in the Shadow Spear box set and now re-released alongside the sneaky Space Marines from that same box set. So it took four years for this guy to get a standalone release. Has it really been four years since that model came out? It's a real shame that it's taken so long because this model is absolutely awesome with all the cool flame details, the like skull motif helmet. I think that there's a lot for Chaos players to get really excited about for painting. Fortunately, I managed to get my hand on one of these for a commission that I'm painting up as they are quite difficult to get a hold of being out of stock in a lot of places online. As this is for a commission, I'll be painting him up in the black and white quartered scheme of the Sons of Malice. Let's get into it and descend to the realms of chaos. I started from a white prime and then a layer of sky gray, a light gray color. For the black parts, I used a layer of black mixed with a little purple. This avoids one of the problems with black, which is how do you get shadows if the armor is already black? By not using pure black, I leave myself with that color to use in the deepest recesses of the armor later. I next painted all the trim around the armor with silver. And this guy is nowhere near as bad as the rest of the Chaos Space Marines, as the trim is mostly covered in cloth and demon summoning regalia. There is, however, still some on his leg and also on his backpack. Speaking of demon summoning, let me rustle up something interesting. <laughs> oh. Only 27% of you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button underneath in order to rectify that and help me on my journey to 5,000 subscribers. It's pretty normal for me to make a few misstrokes while painting, and here you can see me coming back in with the black and purple mix to neaten up. I also touched up any mistakes on the grey with sky grey before continuing on. Now a Chaos Sorcerer is only as good as his cloak, but I want the colours here to be muted to let the armour shine through. I used Rhinox Hide as my base coat. Now next let's focus on some of the details around this guy in order to show some of the techniques that I used there, starting with the skulls. Now there's skulls all over this model, and all of them got a base coat with middle stone. Over this, while the paint was still wet, I applied light brown in a wet blend. Now, wet blending is just the act of getting another coat of paint on while the previous one is still wet. So this then means that you have a bit more time to mix the colours together and make a more organic transition between the two. I think a lot of people use terms like wet blending and glazing and all these other sort of paintery things and they can be quite intimidating at first, but if you understand what the principle is behind it, they're actually relatively simple. Speaking of wet blending, I added some off-white and wet blended more towards the top where the light is going to catch more. There are some parts that are not so neat, but that's not a problem as the next step is to tie it all together with a shade of Agrax Earthshade. Once that was dry, I picked out all the details with off-white, like around the orbits of the eye sockets and any areas where there's damage to the skulls from whatever it was that caused them to get into this position in the first place. Being on the cloak of a Master of Possessions, probably not where I see myself being in five years' time. Hopefully. Back to the cloak now to make a suitably leathery item for this guy. Just don't think too closely about what sort of leather he might use given that he has literal human skulls on the bottom. I mixed Scrag Brown into the Rhinox and layered this over the top, applying it to the sort of top portions of the folds in the cloak. This still leaves some of that Rhinox hide in the recesses and also helps to give a smooth transition between the two. I added more Scrag Brown into the mix and layered this even closer to the tops of those folds. Next, in order to give a bit of texture to the cloak, I used pure scrag brown in a hatching pattern, just drawing rough lines across the surface, again focused around the tops of those folds. To add some variety, I also added some off-white into this colour and used this again over the same areas.
Now I added additional water to my Scrag Brown Rhinox Hide mix and used this as a glaze all over. This is going to help to tie everything together and help stop any parts that are sticking out too much from standing out from the overall kind of leather effect. And with that, here's the completed cloak. Now this guy's also got a nice fur lining on his coat, so let's tackle that next. I started this area off with a coat of German grey, a dark bluey grey. I added white to this and overbrushed over the fur area. Now this was just a case of taking my brush, turning it sideways and applying it like a dry brush with less paint than you might expect, pulling towards me so that it always applies to the edges of the fur parts. I added more white and continued overbrushing, this time just focusing towards the edges where the light is going to catch more. I noticed while I was painting the fur that there are also these sort of feathers, really leaning to the shamanistic vibe of this guy. So I picked these out um, with another colour, this being dark blue, which I glazed over the top. The advantage to glazing here is you can see all the shading that's been done with that German grey and the added white, meaning that you can really see the individual details of this part of the model. For a bit more visual interest, I also applied Beal Tan Green over the top of the blue on one end of the feathers. I really love how this looks as it gives it a sort of peacock effect. Leave your comments down below as to what kind of birds you think of are the most chaotic. To finish it off, I applied a Seraphim Sepia wash over all of the fur parts, which just makes it look a little bit more organic rather than the very cold German grey that we had before. So let's move now on to some other details. There are two different golds across the model. The first one were the areas that I'd previously painted silver for the trim. I layered these with bright brass. I left patches across this as I want it to look like the gold is really worn and it's not kind of uniform all the way across. I then took some Vallejo silver and used this to highlight things like the little rivets and also any sharp edges. Don't hesitate to clean up at any stage. At this point, I took my sky gray and re-established that base coat. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. It is a lot of going back and fixing mistakes you've just made. At least if you have brush control like I do. Now the reason we're concerned about the sky grey at the moment is because we are now going to highlight it. Adding white to about a 50-50 mix, I used this to highlight any sharp edges like around the foot here and also the upper thigh. More white, more highlights, again focused in the centre of where the previous highlights were. Now around the thigh in particular, I needed to use some grey glazing in order to get it to meld in with the rest of what was happening there. Just thin down your sky grey and use this to apply to the edges of where you've just done the white highlights. Now I mentioned that there were two golds across the model. The other one was just Retributor Armour shaded with Reitland Flesh Shade. Now the centre of this model is absolutely flooded with detail, but everything I've painted here follows a similar method to the other parts of the model so far. The knife was painted like the feathers on the back, the leather pistol holster was similar to the cloak but using Vallejo saddle brown as a base coat. With a few techniques in your arsenal, all you need to do is swap the colours and you have a whole toolbox of different skills you can apply. Not every detail needs the same attention either. The scroll on the waist is just a base coat of off-white, washed with Seraphim Sepia, before re-highlighting with off-white. Oh, and on reusing techniques, the Skull Shaman Mask uses the same techniques as the skulls on the base, but with the off-white highlights pushed a little bit further to draw the viewer's attention. Some details are going to draw the eye more than others, and on this model, the flames are definitely one of those key details. I start by base coating these white. Now you can follow the method I'm going to use here for any colour of flames. I'm using green, so I'm grabbing a dark green, which is medium green from Vallejo, and a light green, lime green, as well as my white. First I mix up my light green with white and apply this over about 90% of the flames. The white is only left at the very base of the flame where it's going to be hottest. Next up is my light green, thinned down to be a little transparent and layered over about 75% of the flames, again leaving the brighter colours closer to the centre. Next I mix dark green into the light green, applying this to the top 50% with pure dark green on the tips. I also wash over with Beal Tan Green to bring it all together, but you could just thin down your dark colour for this, you don't need a specific wash. You may have noticed I also painted the eyes using a very similar method. Try this on your models for some easy glow effects, just make sure you have the lightest colours nearest to the centre. 
After a few more touch-ups, I applied him to his scenic base, and this master of possessions is ready to commit all kinds of atrocities against the false followers of the court's emperor. Sorry, don't know what came over me there. If you enjoyed the video, drop me a like and let me know what you thought of the paint job in the comments down below. Uh, I release videos every Sunday here on Hobby with Ollie, and if you're interested in chatting with me about your models, why not join the Discord server that we started up a couple of weeks ago? There's a really lovely community of people on there posting all about their hobby goals and hobby achievements. If you're interested in supporting the channel directly, I do have an affiliate link for Element Games in the description down below. If you follow that link, then you're going to get discounted hobby products compared with Games Workshop, and I get a small kickback on anything you purchase at no additional cost to you. It really is win-win, so thank you to those of you who have used those links. Thanks so much for watching this little chaotic aside, and in the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time. Well, I'm glad that's over and all the chaotic sort of taint has been cleared from the Hobby with Ollie studio. At least I didn't summon any hideous warp-based monstrosities and the worst I got was a little bit of a kind of possessing from the Master of Possession.